Hello, everybody. Today, I am joined by my friends to talk about Malaz and Book of the Fallen, a series I finished at the very end of 2021. I just recently released a video talking about my general feelings about each of the books in a non-spoiler way. So if you're interested in that, I'll direct you to that video, which is probably going to be a lot shorter than this one. But I thought it'd be great to discuss the series as a whole, just to get some different perspectives on the series uh, from some of my friends who finished. And actually, I'm joined here. I'll go ahead and start with Jimmy, because Jimmy, I have never had you on my channel. Not yet. Anyway, how dare you? <laughs> and so it's such a it's so wonderful to have you. And I also am so excited that Jimmy is here because he just finished The Crippled God 30 minutes ago. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yep. okay. sure did. I was wondering why Jimmy was here. I'm like, <laughs> are we going to knock a book? <laughs> no, okay. I, I have ascended. It is true. Um, it took about 30 minutes. Joanna, it is weird. I haven't never been on your channel. I didn't realize that until just now because we have talked for literal hours. For hours. <laughs> <laughs> and hours yeah i'd probably so, talk to you more than any other booktuber here or at all yeah Just i think there's a good of possibility hours, of that adding yeah. on nets plus all of the the laws and discussions all combined so <laughs> And they've been wonderful and I'm happy to be here. And yeah, I just kind of stared at my wall for like a good 10 minutes prepping for this because uh, whiplash from finishing the series and all the feels and, and a lot of different thoughts too. Uh, yeah. and I'm not sure how to formulate those yet, but I'm glad that I get the opportunity to talk some Malaz and like fresh off of finishing. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, absolutely. And if you all don't know, Jimmy has a fantastic channel, fantastic community. He has a wonderful series on his channel called Chatting with Nuts. And he also has been having some wonderful Malaz and discussions, like spoilery discussions with live chat. And Steven Erickson has actually even joined in the chat a few times. So it's been really fun to discuss the books with him. And joining me again, I have a few other guests. So I have Brittany from Books with Brittany joining me here again. And how are you doing, Brittany? Really well, thanks. Yeah. It's been for me uh, over six months, I think now since I finished my first read through of Malazan. So yeah, yeah, wonderful. And I've been following Brittany's journey through Malazan um, for a long while now, and we've had a, a couple of wonderful discussions. We have one here on my channel and one over on our friend Ola's channel. And so I just love hearing Brittany's perspective. It's been so so nice. And also joining me here again today is Alan from the Library of Alexandria, who is my military fantasy friend. <laughs> um, I just love Alan's strong opinions about things and his excitement over the series. I'm very excited to have you here again, Alan. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm the longest uh, from finishing it. I finished Crippled God in January. So a year ago, a year ago. Wow. I finished. But I've, I mean, you know, I talk about it so often and it's i mean i follow people reading it and so I, i'm like isn't that where this happens and they're like no no no, that's where this happens I'm like that's right i remember that i didn't like that so that's usually yeah. what it is yeah and alan's had an interesting journey with the series because alan you finished the series you read some of the later books once but you read the first several books yeah, i started in 2008 because i remember i was reading dead house gates when i was studying japan which was 2008 which is the only reason i can mark the date so i read the first three and then i read through book five i read through midnight tides and then i read i made it all the way to toll the hounds and then it was like another 10 years before i picked it up again so i i've, I've read like the first five three times and then like six and seven twice and then eight nine and ten just once yeah Cool. That is so cool. I just love Alan's perspective on things. He also has a whole Malazan section on his Discord, which I've been off and on active on. Whenever I've been on Discord, it's always been a fun place to go in and see where people are. But yeah. where you can go for the hot takes. It's where you can go if like you're like, man, I don't really like that. Like, you know, no one's gonna no one's gonna eat you alive. It's true. I'll be like, I'll be like, you know what, me either. I didn't really like that part either. So yeah, people have been pretty supportive of strong differing opinions on things. And yeah, and it's been actually a very comfortable place for me to go in and ask some questions. So I love the series though. Oh, it sounds like I don't like it. No, I love the series. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was gonna I, ask. No, I definitely like it. There's just parts I don't like. It's a the books are like 1200 pages long. They are. <laughs> yes, Jimmy. And it, not all of us can read it in like three days. <laughs> 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 
Um, yes, um, Jimmy has gone through the series at record speed, in my opinion. But uh, yes, and then of course joining us again, Philip Chase. I'm so happy to have you back, Philip. And of yeah, course, Philip you. is such an inspiration to the Malazan community. He has wonderful analysis videos with his nemesis, Professor Fireballs, a critical dragon. And he, it's been wonderful following your reread of the series because you just have had so many fascinating insights and perspectives, both in non-spoiler ways and in spoiler ways. So yes, wonderful to have you here. Well, thank you, Joanna. And I, I hate to correct Alan already. <laughs> It's it's been about six years since I finished the series. Um, yeah, yeah, Philip, but you you've, you've done all of them, like, like this year, except the last. Yeah, I'm actually on the reread, and we're AP and I have started Dust of Dreams. Uh, so yeah, um, so I'm just teasing Alan. And yeah, and it's funny because even though AP and and Philip are each other's nemesis, um, we've just had some very entertaining discussions between Philip and Alan, <laughs> with a, with Alan and uh, and Philip going back and forth playing dev, devil's advocate with one another and <laughs> and well, actually, to... Alan Alan was the devil, I think, over your, <laughs> and I was the angel. Yes, right? yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. The crippled god will cleanse your soul. And then <laughs> oh, yeah. Alan After the, say, the crippled god will cleanse your soul. I but before it cleanses your soul, Philip, it will destroy your soul. I have some general discussion points. We're going to keep this spoiler free for a while and then maybe get into spoilers possibly or just keep the spoiler free. The first question is any advice for new readers, especially those who are booktubers? on starting the series or talking about the series on booktube? Um, I think for me, it really didn't mean a whole lot when I started it on booktube. I primarily read young adult fantasy at the time and I was like, I want a challenge. So then I picked up Gardens of the Moon and in, in one of my early reviews, I said, uh, Eric Stevenson, I think. And then later on, I was like, I said, I still get comments on that video. And like, I know I, I messed up. And uh, so there was like no pressure at all. I just was like, bluntly honest, this is how I feel. Didn't know there was like a community. I didn't even know what Reddit was at the time. Like, I didn't know there was a big following really other than people said it was a challenging series. So I definitely was not like overly intimidated of like the internet space or like um, having a, a booktube channel at the time being, but I guess advice for, for booktubers starting it is just find some friends that you can chat with about it because I think mm -hmm. that your experience will be enhanced greatly by having conversations, maybe some veterans that can help you work through some points if you're confused, like I was a lot, um, or just, you know, some friends that want to read it alongside of you and you can have those discussions together, working things out. I think that would, would make the biggest difference, especially if I could go back and change things since I read so many of them without really knowing anybody that was reading it and not having any friends that were reading them. I think that would, I think that would change things a lot. That is such great advice. That's wonderful. And that's actually the approach that Jimmy kind of switched to after a while. Jimmy, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, because I reviewed the first three and I was like, this is miserable. Uh, <laughs> like just yelling at my camera. I So I am much more of a long form conversation person. And I've always found that I end up learning a lot more from the books I read when I talk about other people, even who maybe disagree with my point of view. And I think that that's probably the best advice going into Malaz, and especially as a content creator is kind of what like Brittany said is finding some other people, even if they're not reading it actively, but having someone to bounce things off of and saying, is it okay to be confused at this point? Because confusion slash curiosity, I think is baked into the recipe of Malazan. And it's an important part of the series. Um, it's going to make you engage with the text, but it also forces you, in my opinion, to engage with the community. And I have found a uh, pretty good place in the community. I've had nothing but positive experiences, probably because I'm mostly positive uh, or overwhelmingly positive even on the series. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. It's okay to be confused, reach out and make it more than just a, another read if you can, uh, if you have the time for that, or if you want to do something like that. That's really well said. Yeah. Um, Philip, do you want to add to that? Because I know that you probably didn't go through the individual books on your first read on booktube, right? It's mostly on your reread. And uh, it just came about that you ended up having this connection with A.B. Canavan, a critical dragon, and having discussions with him. So do you want to talk about that? 
Sure. Yeah. The first time I read it, I was entirely on my own. I did not know anyone who had read Malazan. I did not know about BookTube. And I really loved the books, but I also knew that I was going to reread them because I, I knew that there were some things I missed and, and some things I didn't quite get. Um, so that was uh, one of the first things I knew I was going to do when I started my channel was to do a Malazan reread. And I was going to do it by myself, but I uh, had the fortunate experience of having this uh, this uh, fellow leave a comment on one of my videos, the same one that you first uh, left a comment on, I think, Joanna, which yes. was history of the fantasy genre kind of video. Um, and yeah, it was AP left a comment there and we struck up a, a conversation eventually. And I uh, was very, I'm very fortunate to have been doing this read with uh, this reread for with AP in case people don't know, he is actually Steven Erickson and Ian Esselman's advanced reader, meaning they show him all their stuff before they show it to their publisher. So uh, he has, I think, done some great work um, in that light um, and obviously has some incredible insights. Um, so I've been very, very lucky. And, and that's just, I think, an illustration of how much more you can get. Like, uh, I, I totally agree with everything that Brittany and, and Jimmy were saying that you get a lot more from any any read, really, if you're doing it with with friends, and you're encouraging each other, and you're bouncing ideas off of each other, and you're learning from each other's perspectives and experiences. So that's the way to do it if you can. That's the beauty of, of BookTube, really. So yeah, yeah, wonderful. Do you want to add anything to that, Alan? Because I know you did start off giving several videos on the series and. I read, I read them. I read all except the Cripple God really on my own. I read Tool of Hounds and, and Dust of Dreams after I had a channel, but I didn't like I was, wasn't talking about mouths with anybody. Um, I I actually I actually enjoyed the experience of reading them uh, by myself more than I uh, enjoyed them after joining BookTube as far as the reading experience is concerned. I like talking about them now that I am done with people. But when I was reading them on my own, I mean, yeah, they were confusing. I didn't have anybody bounce off. And like Philip, I didn't know anybody that was reading them. Um, I recommended them to people. Um, but uh, so I read them multiple times and I understood stuff more, you know, the, yeah. the next times I went through them. Um, but I found that there was, I didn't have any pressure to like anything. It was just like, well, I don't like that part, like that part, that part's awesome. Oh, I can say, yeah, you know what? I think Macari and Map are boring in book two. And I didn't have anybody being like, no, you don't understand. Like, how can you possibly like I can just I can just be like, that's eh, fine and move on to Coltane, you know, which is what which is what I like in book two. Um, so I really had like I didn't have, there wasn't any external pressure. And, you know, people feel external pressure like more than more than some people. Uh, like if I ever read if I start uh, Blade itself, I'll probably never I probably won't tell anybody. I'll probably read uh, the first first love book without telling anybody. Because, you know, then, oh, what's going on? Oh, have you got to this part yet? Oh, my gosh, do you love this yet? It's like, guys, just let me read it. Like, just let me read it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's me, personally. And, you know, Malazan, I stopped making uh, Malazan reviews because it was early on in BookTube. And, like, some, some guy just, like, it'd been such a fun experience. And some dude jumped on my memories of my thing. It was like, well, you don't understand. Like, maybe you should finish the series and do this and this before. I said, dude. I said I didn't finish the series. You're correcting me on something when I said, I am not done yet. This is what I think is happening. And he's like, well, you need to read Crippled God and Dust of Dreams again. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, why are you being rude to me? And I was like, cool, I'm done with that. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make stuff like, like, you know, people aren't gonna, aren't gonna jump down my throat about stuff. And so I, I stayed away from it for a little bit, but then like, you know, everyone I knew started reading Malazan and I'm like, well, I've read these books. And so that's when that's when like I started engaging with the with the stuff again, and, and I love it. Like I love talking about because I mean I like I like a lot of the stuff that not everyone you know reads Malazan for. Like like I know Brittany is not a military fantasy person, but that is that is what I go to Malazan for is is you know Chain of Dogs and Yigatan and and um, you know all this, the, the siege craft and, the, and the, the on the ground soldier stuff. It reminds me of Black Company, which was one of my favorite series um, when I was in high school. So, um, so yeah, that's what I like about Malazan is there's something literally for really, if you like any kind of fantasy, there's something there. You know, you just have to be okay with the stuff that, you know, isn't your favorite. Yeah. yeah. I think it's great.
Absolutely. Yeah. I really feel like I was kind of at an advantage. I talked about this in my recent video about how I felt like I was an, ad at an advantage, not knowing anything about this series when I started it and not having the dread and weight of Malaza and, you know, on my shoulders and um, just kind of going into it with an open mind. Oh, what's this about kind of feeling? But then I also feel like it might've been easy in a way just to read through the first three books and not have any pressure to do videos on them. In some ways, having the pressure of doing a video kind of helped me to organize my thoughts on, and reflect on them a little bit more deeply than I would have had I just read through them. So there's that benefit. But at the same time, I do know that as a new channel and as somebody reading Malazan, I did feel like I needed to put some time and effort into what I was discussing. And I will be honest, I took a long time um, organizing my thoughts for my Malazan videos a long time. Yeah. And even then, after every single one, I just never felt satisfied. I never felt like I covered enough or went into enough details or um, I, I questioned myself a lot. And I even doing, even after doing that, I have given the advice, uh, you know, to people and to myself that you don't need to talk about everything when you talk about these books, it, because there's no way to do it. I mean, even Philip and AP don't talk about every plot point that happens in each of the books. Um, we, we discuss quite a bit, I think, on, on your channel, Jimmy, but even then, it's just, there's so many things that happen. And I don't know that viewers need every little plot point discussed. It's more just what's meaningful to you. So that's kind of been my approach. And there have been a lot of things, honestly, I haven't totally understood in the series. And I've just kind of rolled with it. I'm like, I'm a first time reader. I'm not yeah. going to get everything. I'm just going to roll with it. Um, I did feel that a couple of things. I think Jimmy and what Brittany said too, it, you are so right. Like there is something that is just so helpful about discussing these books with other people. For me, that has helped me more than trying to do it on my own, I think, to a large degree. And two is that I know when I did my Cripple God video, I actually did do a midpoint, mid-book chat, and then a final chat. And I didn't do that with any of the other books, but actually that helped me too, was to do it halfway because there's no way I could have talked about everything in one video. I would have exhausted myself. Um, but for me, that worked perfectly. So did you have any process for trying to keep any names straight or places straight? Or did you take any notes? Extensive use of the dramatis personae in both the front and the back of the books. Um, I, I like the terms in the back of the books and the front with the dramatis personae. That's how I did it. And so you just you know who people are. The con most confusing thing is, is when there, there were two characters that were not the same character that had the same name across several books. And then like, and I'm just like, like, why would you, why would you name them the same? Like, seriously, for the, like the first time, ugh, I, I can't tell you spoilers, but you'll know what it is. Like that, it was like, why would you use the same name for those things that aren't even the same like race? Like, I was so confused. I'm like, didn't this, didn't this happen to this person? Why is this person back? And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. it's the other one. I'm like, <laughs> it's the other why would you have you're inf you're infinite choice? Why would you give them the same name? That was, that was literally the most confused I ever was, was, was that right there. But it's such a precious name, Alan. I mean, I actually, I know exactly yes. Alan. I, I had the exact same reaction. I was like, wait, what? Like this guy's back? Yeah, I know. He's back. Like, what? Like, and I was no. disappointed because he wasn't back. And I was like, oh. There's no reason a drink should be this size. I think it's an inside joke, actually, because there's a third entity, the same name. Why? Yeah, I think it's an inside joke. In what? The novels of Mao's and Empire? <laughs> oh, no. Philip. Oh, okay, so that's that's something I need to mention because I think our viewers might be confused. So, uh, one other thing to mention, and that's been a challenge in this series, is that Malazan Book of the Fallen, the ten book series, isn't the only series in Malazan. There are several series in Malazan, including the novels of the Malazan Empire, The Path to Ascendancy. We have the start of the Witness trilogy, and. Uh, the Crimson Guard and what oh, sorry the Carcanus trilogy the Carcanus is... trilogy yes and so one challenge that I have had with storylines because there are so many storylines 
is that sometimes the payoff or the explanation of certain things happens in a different series. And it's a little confusing as a first time reader, unless you have Philip Chase <laughs> to know which storylines um, are you can you're supposed to be understanding and which you have to you you can accept or that you have an understanding that that takes off in a different series. I don't know if that made sense. <laughs> it's been challenging though. Yeah. Well, there there's um, just. Kind of <clears throat> off of that and also what Alan was saying there's an, a huge cast of characters here and there's extensive it's a world with several continents and there's a lot to keep track of and I if there's one thing I regret about the first time that I read the books is that I spent so much time flipping to the dramatis personae and the maps and going back and, and like tr trying to master it all while I was reading and I wish somebody had taken me and said stop being such a control freak just read the book, let yourself enjoy the story, which I was able to do, which I've been able to do the second time reading through the Malazan book, The Fallen. I, I, what I do now is I look at the Dramatis Personae in the beginning and the map, and then I don't look back until I finish this, the, the book, and which is a much more, it allows me to be immersed much more in the story mm -hmm. that way. Um, so, but I had, I guess, I mean, I learned the first time and, and that set me up for the reread to really enjoy it. So I'm the exact opposite of Philip. I enjoy it more having some kind of context to what is happening in this book. So knowing the dramatic persona, I'm like, okay, so this, this person is a member of this group. I don't know what this group is yet. Let me look and see what this group is. Flip. Oh, okay. That's what this is. That helps me. But again, you know, we don't have to have to read the same. Well, but that brings up a question. Do you think you would have enjoyed it as much on your reread if you hadn't done that the first time, Philip? Yeah, no, I I needed to get that stuff down because that's the type of person. I'm actually more like Alan, really. That's my personality. I obsess over the, getting everything right and knowing where the people are. And, and I love maps. So I'm constantly yeah. looking at where they are and, and that sort of thing. And I think it just... I probably did help myself on the reread by being so obsessive the yeah. first time. So, you know, I mean, I can't change it. I, and I, I don't have any regrets, I guess, but. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting because Jimmy and I actually have had this conversation before um, ah. about, because uh, for me, and I'd love to hear Brittany and Jimmy's take on this too. Cause for me, I like, I feel like my brain can only absorb so much <laughs> and some people are much smarter than me and they can absorb a lot more as first time readers than I can. But uh, for me, I like, I, I thought it was interesting hearing from you. I think I heard this from you in a previous conversation we had, Philip, about how the first time you read through the series, you were attending to plot and what was happening in the plot. And on your reread, it was, it allowed you to really connect to the characters on a deeper level. Um, I was reflecting on you saying that, and I was thinking about how, for me, it's the opposite. It was completely the opposite. For me, I just accepted, I don't really get the plot that very well in this, in this series. I mean, I get some of the larger plot points, but there were a lot of little details I know that were, that were confusing and that went over my head. I just kind of had a point. I did try. I did try. I, I, I took detailed notes. And I tried to understand every little plot point after a while, I kind of gave up and I just attended to what I could latch on to. And for me, it's just easiest for me to latch on to the characters and to what they're going through and the themes as they are presented through the characters' struggles and their psychology. It's just what's easier for my brain. So that was kind of what I attended to as a first time reader. Now, if I went back and reread the series, I might try to go more into plot but it seemed really hard to do for my brain to do both, <laughs> even though I know it's possible and some people are able to do it. That I'm just being honest that that was my experience. And uh, Brittany, yeah. Yeah, so for me, um, because like I said at the beginning, I, I just really didn't know what to expect and I just read the books and I didn't take any notes. And then as I got through Memories of Ice and it, I listened, actually that's when I started listening to the 10 Very Big Books podcast, which was really helpful for me as a reader because they would discuss so many things and um, kind of like help me understand some things that maybe I was confused about. So that was sort of after that point, because I think I was a bit of ahead of them. So then I started taking notes, like very detailed notes. 
and doing, I don't remember if they were like reviews or I just kind of did like recaps, but that's when I started noticing that people were watching the Malazan videos I was making. And, and that's when I started getting nervous because it, it's a, I don't know, like most people were very supportive, but I was just so nervous about messing things up or missing things. And that's so silly because in reality, like 99% of the viewers couldn't care less. And they say like, you don't have to go over every detail as you've said. And I think actually what is best as a content creator specifically regarding Malazan videos is point out what is impactful to you and what you notice, because that's how you're going to have variety in the yeah. Malazan space on YouTube. Anyways, nobody wants to hear the same list of detailed plot points from every Malazan book. It's more about your experience and what you liked and disliked. So it took me a couple of the books to figure that out. But I think the main reason I stopped doing that is because it took all of the enjoyment out of the process for me because I'm not that type of reader. I'm like an emotional reader. And like you, Joanna, plot is like, for me, the last thing I care about when I'm reading a book. And as Alan said, I'm not a military fantasy girl. <laughs> so like the plot and having like military fantasy aspects, that's not what I was interested in reading about. It was connecting with the characters, the themes, the emotional impact. And so I couldn't get any of that when I was so concerned about making every connection. And thankfully I had a lot of really great just viewers and commenters from the Malazan community. And they were like, just, just let it wash over you. Just do your best. It's okay. You can reread it later. And, and I definitely have regrets. It definitely have regrets about the way I read the series and finished it, but it's like, it's not really a regret. Like I can read them again. You know what I mean? No big yeah. deal. But I will say what, when I got to be more confused later on in the series was after I stopped taking any kind of notes. Mm. So I think I needed to find some kind of balance between taking notes in some way, not so much focusing on creating content out of the notes, making a video or a recap for other viewers, but rather just like mental notes to organize things for myself in a, in a minimal way that wasn't overpowering my enjoyment. Because when I stopped doing notes altogether, that's when I saw a direct decline in like how much I was enjoying the series because I think my brain was just missing too many things to fully grasp everything that was happening and be able to have that payoff. Yeah, I think that's well said, just having that balance. Yeah, Jimmy, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think my, my experience is uh, pretty similar. And I was like through book three, and I said earlier, it was miserable shooting those videos. The reason why is because I did feel like I had to get everything right. Um, which was not the case. And Philip actually told me about his wish that he had not tried to pinpoint everything. Uh, and I said, I'm going to take that approach. What sticks with me, I will, I will ride with and I will get through. And I would say that I did pay attention to the plot above all else, especially when it came to um, the gods. Uh, but there were characters that I latched onto, which is interesting because I feel like a lot of the characters I've latched onto are not ones that other people have latched onto as much. Uh, so I think that's kind of a cool experience. Uh, but that's why I started doing the discussions rather than the reviews, because I said, well, I'm going to get it wrong. So why not have Philip on and have him tell me I'm wrong? Because that's how I'm going to learn. And it, I think it made my experience much better. However, to Brittany's point about note taking, my memories of ice notes, I don't know, 23 pages in Word. Like it was way too much. I, I wrote a short story. I mean, it was absurd. Um, and it was just too much. It was too much. It was too much. And then these last three books, Told the Hounds, Dust of Dreams, and Cripple God, I only recorded things where I said, wow or that I was confused by, because then I liked having that cleared up. So I think, I think I would have been in a lot of trouble had I not taken notes, but I also definitely had a moment where I was taking way too many notes. <laughs> so, and I liked what Brittany said about making the notes about content creation or just about your experience. And as I started taking uh, more notes that were anecdotal to my experience, is when I felt like I found the kind of the groove and that happened right around the bone hunters. Oh, that's uh, a really good tip. Yeah. I just, I, I just, uh, it's weird. Like the first three books are almost a totally different experience than the next three. And then the last three are also very strange uh, to me. Like I just started reading them differently at each point. So uh, as Malazan also changed and went to different continents and all this crazy stuff, I felt like I was also changing my approach constantly. I also already knew by book three, I was going to reread the series. I was very interested in the series. Uh, I wanted to know more, but I, I kind of just like latched on to certain things and then I let other stuff just fly down the river, down the Warren, like whatever. And uh, I'm kind of glad I went that way, but I definitely missed some stuff. So 
Yeah, that's such a good, that's such great advice. And I never thought about that before, but I think you're right because a lot of people and myself included have told other people that it really takes, I think at least the first three books before, at least it did. It took me, um, I don't know. I, I don't know if this is the most accurate way to put it, but I knew, I knew at the end of book three that I was definitely committed to the series. There was a point along the way in the middle of book three where I thought, I, I kind of already want to reread book three. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm just sort of rereading my, multiple Memories times. of Ice, and I thought, because there's so much um, history and backstory in Memories of Ice that I thought, I almost halfway want to like go back and reread this book, and I haven't even finished it yet. Uh, or maybe just go back and reread Gardens of the Moon and Dead House Gates up until this point. But I'm kind of glad I didn't do that. But I did know that I was committed to the series after the third book. And a lot of people will say that because you get one flavor from Gardens of the Moon, which is a great one. You know, it's a great setup for the series, but uh, you definitely see, I don't know, it's a very different experience going through the next couple of books, but I never thought about it in terms of the first three books versus the next three books and then the Bone Hunters, I suppose, and then the last three books. So interesting. That's kind of how I felt though. I felt like the first three were like an arc in a lot of ways. And I know like two and four kind of connect and then like five and set all that stuff. Like there's those intertwining threads. But for me, it was like one through three was very much a thing. And then four felt like a different, a different approach, obviously still Malazan. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I felt like it was more streamlined and four, five, six just rolled for me. Like I loved it. Seven introduced uh, some of the older things, but also some new things. And then like eight, nine, 10, I was just like, what? <laughs> like, kind of. <laughs> Meta. I like I like the first six better than better than the the back the back half of the series. Thank um, you. Yeah, I like I like one through six the best. That doesn't shock me. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that doesn't shock me at all. We have an accord. Yeah. Well, I never hear anybody say that. That was that's why I was surprised, and I always feel bad when I well, say I like the first yeah. half. I, I, I also I also like the first half. Okay. Um, yeah. It's not it's not the back half. It's not like the back half is bad. I just really oh. enjoy the first half. I just I just find myself enjoying them significantly more. Like well, t- yeah. I can see myself rereading, like I can always see myself rereading Bone Hunters, obviously, and Midnight Tides, which I also love. Oh. And then, you know, when I think about Reaper's Gale and, and Tola Hounds and Dust of Dreams and Cripple God, which I which I like, but it's just like it's I'm not quite as jazzed. So yeah, yeah. Total Hounds definitely is is a monumental like change, I think. And and Erickson calls it the cipher of the series. And I think that that is very apt. Like, I think that makes a lot of sense because uh, it does change very dramatically in eight, nine and 10. At least I thought. Yes, it does change <laughs> for sure. So I'm not, I'm not shocked to hear that like one through six or even one through seven, I, th- mm-hmm. I think could be people's favorites. And then like towards the end, yes. it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, I think that that's an important point too. And I, um, I did talk a lot about even in the last video I did about how I think going in with an open mind and not having expectations really served me in the beginning. But I have to admit that having some expectation of things moving forward did help me. So I did have the expectation, honestly, that um, while I knew that Midnight Tides was a fan favorite, I knew that House of Chains didn't work for as many people and that it would be maybe be a little bit more of a slow burn. I loved that book. And I also knew that the last three books were uh, a bit more philosophical in nature, so to speak. I know that's the word Alan used anyway, right? <laughs> navel so, gazing. Navel gazing. There's, there's a lot of calic. <laughs> there's a lot of calic in Tola Hounds. Like, there's just so much calic. But I think it helped to know, cert- to have certain expectations. And I knew yeah. from Brittany too, Brittany helped prepare me for some very difficult things that were to come in those three books too. And I, so I think that actually it really did help me to know certain things going forward. In regard to the last books being different from the previous ones, I would say that for me, I love the last three books. Um, Told the Hounds this time around was one of the most moving experiences of my entire life. Uh, mm-hmm. It was Incredible for me. I've never read anything that I found as compelling in terms of uh, dealing with love and grief. And uh, so Erickson's handling of these things is just so masterful and so tremendous. Now, I agree, though, that with everyone that 
they're different, a bit different tonally, and they're a bit different in what he does. Not that they're entirely different because he does all these things earlier, but it's, I think it's a matter of emphasis because a lot of times with Malazan, there's a certain, there are certain themes that swirl around in all of these books. There's stuff about imperialism and there's about empathy and compassion and there's stuff about uh, transcending the self and connecting with people and there's stuff about death and there's stuff about love and grief. And, and I think that it, you can point to different books and say, oh, that's where this theme is a bit more prominent or that's where he does more of this. And I think the last three books, definitely, uh, I don't object to the word philosophical. Um, they, they can be kind of heavy at times, actually. I think it's what we were talking about, Joanna. There, there are some moments in, throughout because Erickson is, um, I think, like all great writers, he's someone who takes on difficult things. Um, and I, I think he handles them responsibly. Um, but, um, they're nevertheless, sometimes they're really tough to read about. And, uh, so he doesn't shy away from that. And, and the, um, uh, the experience for me of the, the last three books, the first time was, okay, it's, this is not easy. This is not a light read. Um, but I found in life that some of the tougher experiences are the ones that I look back on and think, wow, I, I, I learned more from that than from, I had a, for example, I had a professor in grad school who was the meanest, scariest professor you'll ever meet. But I learned more from him than I did from all the other professors because he challenged me. So I think sometimes that kind of a challenge um, is a good thing. Um, just so that people are aware that, that that's what it is. It's, it's, I don't consider it to be something you can just, you know, flip through the pages and, and feel like you're just being entertained. I think you're, you're being engaged on so many different levels with it. And, and some of it is very difficult and challenging. So, but I, I love the last three books and yeah. I'm in dust of dreams now. And, and I'm uh, remembering just how moving the last uh, two books were, but told the hounds, which I, I just read a little while ago, reread that is um, absolutely mind blowing. Just uh, it, it's, it's hard to even compare, um, but so that's how I feel. Um, but I do think that um, people should be aware that there are, you know, difficult themes in here and 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 incidents that uh, some people might want to have uh, trigger warnings and that sort of thing. I know you've talked about that um, before, so that's important for people to to realize. But I do think Erickson handles these things very responsibly. Yeah, um, I have to say that my relationship with Toll the Hounds is the most complex relationship I've ever had with a book before because mm -hmm. uh, I read through it. And I, I mean, I already said this in my last video, so I apologize for being redundant, but I honestly did not feel like I was finished with the book when I finished it. I just, there were certain things that I loved and then there were certain things I struggled with. And I've talked at length about that. It really helped me to have discussions on it. But I have to say that like our Toll the Hounds discussion that we had on Jimmy's channel was one of the best book discussions I've ever had in my entire life. I, I feel like I'm still getting things out of that book, even though I will be honest in saying that there still are things I'm pretty sure I would still not resonate 100% with if I reread the book. And yet there's so much I love and I just can't put it into simple terms. My relationship with that book, I just can't. It's similar with the last two books. For me, I loved Dust of Dreams, even though there was a very, there's a very dark scene in that book. The, mm -hmm. Probably the darkest content I've ever read in a book. And I have said before, and I think it's really important to look at trigger warnings and to look at and understand the discussions I think that are supposed to be had around those points. And uh, the, also I would say though, that the cripple God for me was, I'm still writing an emotional wave from that book. Uh, so overall, I, I feel very satisfied with the how things ended, even though, like I said, uh, as a first time reader, I think there are a lot of things I probably missed and probably could learn more about on a reread. Yeah, I, I like the Toll the Hounds discussion that we had on Jimmy's channel also that Philip forgot that I was in on his The Weeks That Were. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, don't, you, you, uh, you, you bombed the uh, the discussion, <laughs> Alan. But yeah, you're I, right. I'm sorry. I forgot to uh, mention no, it. No, it's totally fine. But um, Toll the Hounds, like I have watched every one of Philip's Toll the Hounds videos. Every one. And I watch, I've watched AP's Toll the Hounds videos and including the most recent one, the Cypher series. I've watched all of them. I and I still... And I still have no idea what book they were reading. I have no, I'm like, 
I'm like, I know. I, 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 I cannot understand. I cannot understand. Like, I, I get that it's different, but it's just, it's so bizarre. This particular book, I just can't get what they get out of it. And I'm just like, where was that book? I want to read that book that like was life changing and was just like no contest. Like it's just powerful and mo I'm like, that's not the book I read. Well, <laughs> so I it's just, it's just so weird. I think that speaks to, uh, you know, to, for people who are thinking about reading the series or just starting out, uh, I think that this is probably a good showcase of what Malazan brings. And that is a varied experience among various individuals. And uh, I think that one of my favorite things is about the series is hearing what resonated with people and what didn't. And that's why it's so important that if you are a content creator or if you're just sharing your thoughts and discords or good reads, reviews or whatever, to, to talk about your experience uh, and, and very much what your thoughts were and what resonated with you, because Alan <laughs> and Philip couldn't be on more opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to Tulpa Hounds. And I loved hearing both of those things. Uh, and no one, I mean, there's a lot of like maybe general consensus of like, maybe like a top two books or so, but, you know, House of Chains and Dust of Dreams are two books that I think generally rank a little bit lower among people. And I love both of them. Um, so it's just, you're going to get a varied experience. So a lot of the preconceived notions that you might have going in are probably going to be thrown to the wayside uh, if you allow yourself just to kind of experience it for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It's so hard. I mean, I could easily just go turn this into a Toll the Hounds discussion and like brainstorm with like, with all of you about what your thoughts about it, but because <laughs> that, that's that kind of book for me. Um, I don't feel like I'm ever going to be done with that book. Like it's just, there's so much there, but actually I think that this goes into, this would be a great way or segue into themes because Toll the Hounds, in my opinion, that is the most thematically heavy of the books, but in general, how would you say that themes are handled in this series compared to other books that you read, whether they are fantasy books or other genres, any any thoughts on that? Because I know that uh, that Philip and I have talked a bit about about themes, and I know you've had some conversations with Steven Erickson about how he starts with themes when he writes these books, and they become I think what was the metaphor you used the barrow or <laughs> yeah well yeah he um, in our midway Malazan discussion with AP and uh, with Steven Erickson and myself um, we started it with a non-spoiler discussion of how he incorporates themes into his books. And because AP and I do focus a lot on themes when we're doing our videos, and Alan would agree with that, I think, um, <laughs> that uh, we focus a lot on themes. Alan, I know you're a closet theme lover. Hey, Alan, so. I do not hate themes. I do, there are just <laughs> certain themes. There are just certain themes. I really like themes. So there's just certain yeah. themes that I glom onto and certain ones that I'm like, eh. Yeah, okay. that is totally fair. Yeah, yeah. so. But, but yeah, Erickson was, he, he just impromptu made this incredible, almost like, um, I guess it was, is a metaphor, but an extended metaphor about how his writing process works. And he talked about, he starts with themes. He absolutely begins with theme and he decides what the theme is first. And then he will make that sort of like a, something that he begins to layer other things all over like with the characters and the plot and everything else so that after the book is done you shouldn't even recognize necessarily there's a big theme right there right it needs to be um not i guess disguised but it needs to be part uh, incorporated into this landscape of the story and so it's buried with you know various grass and and uh plant life and whatever else. So it becomes part of the landscape, but you recognize that there's a mound there and it might even be something like a barrow, which is, uh, you know, you have to, there's a sense of mystery and, and an aura to it, I suppose, um, as it's this uh, important part of the landscape that sort of draws your eye, right? Um, so it was a wonderful um, metaphor that he came up with, um, but he starts with theme. And it, so it's obviously important to him and it is something that I think is at the heart of, uh, and not everyone tells stories the same way, obviously. Um, I think you can always find a theme in, in pretty much any story, but I think certain writers tend to be more uh, uh, theme focused and, and write stories that are more theme driven than others, which is absolutely wonderful. We need all kinds of stories. So, but yeah, so for Erickson, theme is central and there are certain, uh, Malazan themes, I think every one of us here would recognize. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree with all of that. Brittany, do you want to share your perspective on your thoughts on themes in the series or 
any themes that resonated with you or ways that you thought the themes were approached? Yeah, and I find it really interesting because obviously Philip just said everything that I was going to say without having that knowledge of having seen that video yet, um, that I feel like they're subtly and naturally woven into the story rather than some authors who I guess can't quite do it so naturally. Um, I don't necessarily mean that in a negative way either, but sometimes it's very obvious this is what they're going for and sort of everything revolves around that. And even if some of the books, if I look back and I'm like, okay, this book was about motherhood <laughs> to me, one of Erickson's books or brotherhood, you know what I'm saying? Like something, even if to me, that is a major theme, there's so much more going on. And it, it's exactly like you said, it, it's buried under other things so that it's not always so obvious. And it's explored in a way through like natural, human human interactions emotions and things rather than just being like stereotypical or cliche ways to discuss the themes I don't know that that made a lot of sense absolutely but I'm basically just saying yes. that my experience is what Philip was just describing no I think you're absolutely right and like when you were talking about that it made me think of kind of like a lot of young adult books too because I mean there are themes and everything as as Philip said but like a lot of young adult books it will be very overt it will be like this book is exploring mental health <laughs> you know or this is uh exploring um you know intersectionality or but it'll be very very obvious and clear there is just it'll be on the blurb on the back basically it'll be really clear and sometimes actually some of the themes are on the in the blurbs on the back of uh Erickson's books but like you said they aren't there are so many other things going on and I think that this actually could lead to an interesting discussion too um on characters of course I want to get Alan and Jimmy's perspective on this too so uh, Alan, how about you go next? Any, you say, I know we, we joke about themes with you, but honestly, come on. Like the first videos I ever saw of you, I thought this is a theme driven booktuber. <laughs> of course I like themes. They're just yes. some things that resonate otherwise. And, and if I can play the devil in the shoulder to Philip always, uh, there's a, there's <laughs> a certain theme in Reaper's Gale that I think is a little heavy handed rather than, um, uh, involving the, um, patriotists that is just like oh my gosh like that that's 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 like the one time I can think of that I'm just like I get it like I get it let's go um but I, I mean I agree I think I think he handles theme really really well uh, it's just every now and then the themes don't resonate with me quite as much I love the themes of of like brotherhood and 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 friendship and this this kind of unique bond that soldiers boots on the ground have like, I love that. I love the themes, as we've discussed, of, of leadership, the different kinds of, 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 of leaders. We get, you know, freaking spans the gamut from Tavawar to Ganos to, um, to freaking High Lord Pormqual to Lassine to Kellenved to um, I love the Malik Rell. Why are you bringing up Malik Rell? Fill up. I hate Malik <laughs> too. Um, but yes, there's so, there are so many different kinds of leaders, commanders, uh, generals, politicians in this, and that's the kind of stuff that I really like. Is how you know how people respond one to good orders, to bad orders, to uh, I don't know. I just really, I just really like like brotherhood themes and and uh, and leadership and, and a lot of things dealing with dealing with the military and. Um, you know, imperialism, like even, imp I, I teach Latin, like the Romans are, like the Romans and the, and the, the Greek city-states are literally my, my uh, you know, my bread and butter. And so just e exploring imperialism, period, is always fascinating um, to me. Now, you know, the, the slower themes of like, you know, what is, uh, and even grief, like I, I, I like the exploration, I just read Age of Ash. By Daniel Abraham, which the own like the main theme of that is grief, um, but you know more of the existential stuff. Like, what does it mean to you know like what is death? And I'm yeah. like, it's when you die. Done. Moving on. Um, and so it's just it, some of the slower <laughs> themes that just don't resonate quite as much with me. Um, so it's not that I don't like theme. I just I uh, just like certain themes. But I think it's I think a lot of I think most of it's handled really really well. And yeah. you know I I love it. 
I feel like a, a word that always comes into my mind, and I don't know if this is a bad word choice or not, but a uh, mm-hmm. poor word choice, but I always think of the word prismatic when I think of his themes, because mm-hmm. it's never just showing one angle of a theme. It's never like brotherhood equals good, friendship equals good, or, you know, it's like showing multiple dimensions of a theme. And once you think you see one side of things, he'll show you even either in the same book or even in like several books later, just the complete opposite side of that theme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and from loyalty, especially, that's one of my favorites is exploration of loyalty. Like I just, mm-hmm. I love exploration of loyalty, period. Oh, Sorry, Jim. You. No, you're speaking to my heart. That's my, one of my favorite themes is not only the, the good side of loyalty, but the dark side of loyalty, because <laughs> there can be, a, there's a spectrum there. And I think that's what I love about these themes and the way they're explored is that there is a spectrum in how they are explored. Yeah. yeah. It's true of even with uh, empathy and compassion, mm-hmm. like not just, oh, empathy, compassion, good. You know, that's yes. the, the, even though it's it's central to the series, it explores so many different facets of empathy and compassion and, and what they do to the person who is compassionate and to the person who receives the compassion. And sometimes there are examples where it's misplaced. So, yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's not always given in a direct, this is the way it is answer. Sometimes it's, it's, it's presented in a way to evoke questions in the reader. And that's what I really appreciate too. Um, because I think we oversimplify, simplify, especially those themes in our society, (laughs) compassion and empathy. I think we just way oversimplify what they mean. And I really appreciated how I didn't feel the series did that. So uh, Jimmy, do you want to add anything to that? Well, that that was actually going to be my point is just the fact that I I feel like uh, Erickson obviously has themes and there's a ton to go through. I think they're really well done, just like everyone said, but it's more so the fact that Steve does not tell you how to feel about a certain thing or a certain event. Uh, And this is a a good debate point for a lot of people because you will see someone get something totally different out of a scene or react one way to a different scene. And then you kind of come together looking at both sides of the equation and trying to figure out where you fit. And I think that that's a really rewarding experience if you're a thematic reader. Uh, And I like the fact that it's more of a question than, uh, than a statement. And I think that's why it does not come across heavy handed. I would say as an individual, Malazan is one of the few series where I feel like I came out at the end of the tunnel and I think about things very differently in my life right now. Uh, Some of those will dissipate as I move away from the series, but I think some of them will last with me for a very long time. And one of the things about, um, about these books is seeing it from the other side and, and knowing that it's generally a one, this, it could be a could change them all, but there's another human being on the other side of that opinion uh, and why they feel that way. And they, you know, they feel correct. Most people are doing what they think is correct. So to see it from someone else's eyes and to walk in their shoes is, uh, it's tough, but it's important. That's beautifully said. Excellent. And I think um, going from theme into character might be a good transition because I think it's really interesting when you hear that Malazan is a theme-based series, a lot of times you can think, well, then that means, I think it could be easy if you haven't read the series to assume that the characters aren't as important. And it is hard to see how they might be if you hear that there are so many, I think somebody told me there are over 600 characters in this series. I don't know if that's correct or not, but (laughs) it it almost sounds right. Um, But obviously, I mean, I'm sure all of you have had that experience of characters in the series just breaking your heart or just getting cutting deep into you. And I, I think one thing that's also been interesting because I've been watching a lot of these discussions with Steven Erickson with, on either a Critical Dragons channel or on your channel, um, Philip. And it seems to me as though, I mentioned this a little bit yesterday in our discussion on Best of Dreams. It seems to me as though uh, Steven Erickson is somebody who really takes an empathetic approach to his characters when he's writing about them. And so they are, I think that is such an important aspect of the series is the way he, he builds characters. And even though it's not considered character driven in the sense that we are used to, where we're used to following one POV or just a small group of characters or even a multiple character perspective, it's a very different approach to characters, but it's still, the themes are still presented through what the characters are struggling with. I mean, the world is still presented through the characters. It's still 
it's still the driving force in a way too uh, for everything. I would say. Would any yeah. of you all want to add anything to that? A AP once said um, that it's character focused, and I think that's probably the better way to put it, rather than character driven. Um, but I, I mean, that's just one way of thinking about it. But um, it's. Um, I've, I've never spent as much time crying while reading a, a, a book series. Uh, so obviously I have made deep connections to these characters. Um, and so I think Erickson is a absolutely brilliant character writer uh, and characters are central to the Malazan experience. Um, this is a very human series. Um, and the one thing that people should know, like you, I think you were talking about a bit there, Joanna, is that it's not the same as most fantasy series. And Erickson does a lot of things differently, quite deliberately. Um, it's not that this is unique in literature, but in fantasy tends to be uh, a genre where you have a lot of stories that highlight a certain character as the hero or a group of characters that are the protagonists. And we follow along with these characters from the beginning to the end and we watch their development and we see them change and become stronger in order to oppose the enemy and save the world and that sort of thing. There's no one character in, in the Malazan uh, series that can save the world uh, by themselves. It's, that's not the kind of series this is. Um, it's more of a, um, it's a vast look at humanity, which gives you many, many perspectives and POVs and, and with deep connections to them. Um, incredibly moving connections to them. So it's just, it's different in that sense. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> Garza is the longest uh, POV uh, and, and Erickson wrote that, um, that without too many spoilers here, there's one character uh, that uh, you do get the perspective of for a longer than normal period in, in, uh, in a Malazan book. Um, and it was almost like Erickson was responding to critics saying, you can't you know, stick with one character, blah, blah, blah. And he's okay, here, see, watch me do this. Witness. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, he, he did. Um, and, but, but that's kind of an exception. And even then you can't say that character is the hero of the Malazan book of the fallen. I would never say that. Um, mm. some people he is, I don't know, but for me, <laughs> Coltane is the hero of Malaz Malazan. Book of <laughs> okay. What did you say? Coltane. Coltane. Oh. He sings Coltane. <laughs> well, um, I, we could debate that in our time, I guess. I but, would. I love but um, no, it's a great, obviously a fantastic character too. I won't disagree with that. But 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 that's a difference. I think a lot of people come to Malazan being kind of sort of confused. If you're used to reading fantasy, yeah. and you come to Malazan, you're like, wait, where's the hero? Who who am I supposed to be rooting for here? For me, Erickson gives you a much more realistic portrayal of our place in the universe. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like he. This is a, a really deep understanding of humanity. What makes us tick and where we are in relation to everything else. And our connection to everything else and to every person, even if we consider them a stranger or not. I think that's something yep. I take from me with me from the series. Um, Brittany, you look like you're gonna say something. Go ahead. Well, the last thing Philip said is exactly what I was gonna say is to me when reading it, I'm not somebody who like wants to have like a hero or villain in my stories anyways, even though this was different than what I was used to reading, but it just seems like Steven Eric Erickson has such a deep, great understanding of like re human relationships and emotions in a very realistic way. And I was gonna mention something back when we were talking about themes too and the way that they're explored and how he sometimes likes to take a, a deeper look at some of the darker aspects of even some of the things that you might typically think would have a happier tone, whether we're talking about like sister relationships or motherhood and things. Mm -hmm. So if he's gonna take a darker look at motherhood, which I feel like there's so many different ways that motherhood is explored throughout yeah. this, 10 book series, which I mean, I'm guessing probably most readers are like looking for that theme specifically in Malazan, but that's just something that really stood out a lot to me. And, um, but what I was trying to say is even if he's gonna explore the darker aspects, it's just not in the way that you would expect because I feel like most of like so many other fantasy books either would just go completely the dark side or, um, the shock value almost like black and white exact opposites and relating it back to the characters i feel like he was just not afraid 
to have characters that feel unlikable at times. And also my mm -hmm. opinions about the characters would change drastically throughout their experiences because they felt real because I know I'm not always likable every single day. So like, why would a character always be likable? And so I felt like that realistic, like raw human experience was portrayed through these characters in a way that I find a lot of books lack that just raw emotion that just feels so real. That's beautifully yes. said. Yeah. 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 That was perfectly said. That was perfectly said. I have a question for you then, Alan, what made you, well, I don't know if you did this without a spoiler, but what makes you fall in love with characters when you're reading about them? Like there's a certain character in book two that you're in love with. And <laughs> I, like I like characters with conviction. Like I like characters that stand for something. Um, and uh, I, I also like characters that are, I mean, I like tacticians and strategists. I like, I like smart characters and I like characters that people, that people will follow and who is doing, doing their best um whether or not like i like i like never say die characters like we got this like never say die let's do it i mean i played D, &D for um you know most of my life and that's 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 the best thing when playing D, &D is bringing people you bring characters low and then they overcome odds so characters that uh you know are doing that that that's just that's just something that resonates with me is people who are low and then overcome it. I don't like people who are douchebags just like forever. Like, <laughs> I mean, Brittany's right. Everybody but Philip is not, you know, likable every day, every every second of his lives. I can't imagine that Philip is unpleasant ever. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I'm, I, and it's hard. It's hard to to say because I'm drawn to just, I don't know. I'm drawn to like different kinds of characters. So Kel and Ben, I like that. I like, you know, I like Kel and Ben, Emperor Kel and Ben, and and you know his. The things that he does, um, I'm drawn to that kind of character that it's just like, what's going to happen next? You know what I mean? Um, and then I'm drawn to, to Coltane and, you know, we're going to get through this, guys. Here we go. Like, he, even if he doesn't think that they're going to, he's going to pretend that he does. Um, I like unsure characters like Ganos, who is oh, like, God. I cannot do this, but I guess I don't have a choice. And, uh, you know, and then Tavor who is like, what is your problem, Tavor? Like, come on, Tavor. But it's just like, you know what, Tavor? I trust you. You're gonna, you're gonna get us through it, Tavor. You're gonna get us through it. And that just grows. Like from the beginning, you see Tavor like, what, Tavor, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, you're terrible. And then it's like, oh wait, no. Oh wait, no, you're not. Okay, all right, okay, Tavor, okay. And then, you know, that trust builds. And then, you know, people are like, well, Tavor's, I'm like, you shut up. You shut up about Tavor, random soldier. You be quiet. You be Blistic. quiet. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, so there's just, I don't know. And like freaking Carsa is a character that I shouldn't by rights like because. I know, yeah. And it's just bizarre. You'll well, find out if you read the series, but yeah, there are so many characters like that where you feel like you shouldn't like them and then you end up loving them <laughs> yeah his initial archetype is the is characters that i usually don't like just mm -hmm. arrogant brute like just like get out stop i don't have time for this you know i'm a small guy uh you know i've never sports ever so large <laughs> brutes are like my natural nemesis yeah. so you mean like jimmy <laughs> I'm like, Jimmy, and I, I'm right Jimmy, here, and I, I mean... Jimmy and i have an accord we are we are the representatives of our two people <laughs> uh so so i don't know there's just it, it it just varies and then i like to hold because he and and i like to hold because he's brilliant and bug because he's i just love put upon man servants that are like all right let's do it okay yeah it's just <laughs> what a line bringing, <laughs> you're so. bringing to mind too like there's just such a huge variety in this cast of characters in malazan too such a huge oh, i don't cast. like unpleasant characters i tend to not like unpleasant characters just in general because i don't like unpleasant people in real life like that are just always unpleasant but so not those, even like just reading about them because sometimes like, characters can be sort of unpleasant, but still kind of fun to read about in a way. I mean, if they're fun to read about, they're not unpleasant. Then they're oh. like kind of funny. Like mm -hmm. if you're just unpleasant, like, like, ugh, it's just not my thing, but oh. you know, everybody has their own stuff, but I, I, I love Erickson has some of my freaking favorite characters. Yeah. Same. I, I think the biggest misconception that I had walking into these 10 books was the fact that I would not enjoy the characters and that the character work would be, subpar or so foreign to me that I would never be able to connect. And I found that to be 
uh, the opposite of true. I felt like uh, in an economic way, Erickson was able to get me attached in the shortest amount of time. Maybe any author I've read. Yes, same here. Um, mm -hmm. And the best duos in fantasy, in my opinion. Yeah. There's so many. And also, yeah. and I find this is ironic because I'm a male saying this, but I do think that the female characters in this series are very well done, right. uh, which, which is an achievement not only just for a male author, but also a male author that was writing this at the time where we see other series, major series that were published that were not writing very good women at the time. So like, you know, it was kind of a, um, a rare occurrence, I guess, at, the, at that point in the genre. But I, I enjoyed so many of the female characters and also like th that magic is, is kind of even throughout. Like anyone can possess this magic uh, is also a, kind of empowering uh, and just a different type of world than a lot of, of what I was used to seeing with medieval type fantasy. So yeah, yeah, and I, and Brittany and I have talked about that too about the yep. female characters in the series and our it's a great video about them being so well done. Um, I hope Brittany that we have another female perspective video once Ola finishes the series someday. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, video was great. I really thanks enjoyed it. Oh, thanks, um, thanks. But yeah, I just it really kind of blows my mind that. Steven Erickson is able to have that kind of perspective. Um, I know for me, for myself, you know, not being a mother or, um, you know, not having that perspective, I still felt like I understood it. <laughs> and this is a man giving this perspective. So uh, yeah. it's just fascinating the way that that's brought to life. Adding to just the the number of characters and how they all feel like individual voices is, is something that's really impressive to me with no writing abilities or like intentions of ever writing anything. I mean, the amount of sci-fi and fantasy I've read where it's like you get the characters mixed up because they don't feel all that different from one another necessarily. And I never felt like I was getting characters confused with one another. Even if I was confused about a lot of the characters, it's not like their personalities were similar. They were all like so distinct, just adding to how impressive, the, because there's other large, series with large casts of characters that are not all that individual from <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. that I was also reading. <laughs> I totally agree with you. I, I think Jimmy and I were kind of having this discussion on our own yesterday about how it's so uh, one of the hard things. I know uh, Philip, you talked on your channel one time about the dialogue test, which is when you can open up the book to a page and know which character. And we did this to Alan on his channel a couple years ago or a year ago where <laughs> <laughs> with any I, I lost that one. I, you uh, lost that one, Alan. But it's, it's also partly the author too. You know, whether the Anamanda author... Rake. Ugh. <laughs> Dang it. I chose an Anamanda Rake quote from Gardens <laughs> of the Moon. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting how you know if you with Malazan characters, they are they're so distinct in their their voices in their tone and. It's interesting too, because how to do that with so many characters, because like Brittany said, I can think of some series or some books I've read where the characters just, if they're in a group, they all blend together and I can't really tell them apart. And that has actually started to drive me more crazy than ever lately. But at the same time, if you, you can over, it seems like you can overdo that too, and then make the characters kind of like a cartoon or a caricature, right? But somehow Erickson is able to do it without making it uh, too cartoony and still making them distinct. I don't know how he does it. Do you have any insight yes. on that? He, he has incredible range. Uh, and this is an author who, and this is important, I think, too. We haven't mentioned yet how much humor there is in mm, this. Yes. A lot of humor. And thank goodness it's there to help us along at times. But I think we also have to give a lot of credit to Ian Esselmont because the two of them, gamed this world together and created a lot of these characters and their relationships they must have an, have had or have an incredible friendship to be able to play these roles and bring these characters to life and i think that that's maybe some of the it's an open secret i guess everyone kind of knows that they gamed the world before the books were ever written but i think that that's part of the the success of these duos particularly um and and that's something that's worth remarking on mm. the the issue that I had, if I can wet blanket this for a second, the only issue I had, I agree with y'all. I agree with y'all. Toward the end, there started being a lot of like Talana Moss POVs mm -hmm. that I could not keep straight. Like for any, I was like, I do not know the difference between this one and this one and this one, and this one, because they were, most of them were new. Like the, the old ones were fine, but the new ones, I'm just like, 
I don't know. I guess I'll just keep going and figure out what their what their purpose is because I do not know the difference between these. But I think I think just it was just in that section that I struggled. I agree. All yeah. the soldiers. I actually it. I actually went into your Discord when I was reading I think Dust of Dreams and I asked. I said, Do I need to keep track of all these Talati Moss names? Because I'm on book nine to ten, <laughs> and don't. I can remember Nam Kala. I think, but man, I'm I was struggling. But uh, as somebody told me in there. No, it's okay if you don't remember at this point every single Talanimas name. Yeah. Just understand their relation to specific said character, and that was helpful there. But, <laughs> but even that, I mean, I'm sure they were all time. I think my brain was just at a tipping point at that point, though. So, same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who would this series appeal to? And maybe we'll just end it here. But just uh. Who would the series appeal to and how would you recommend this series? Because I know I've had some discussions about how I'm really careful about saying read Malaz and Book of the Fallen. I think it's a wonderful series. It's touched my heart. It's changed my life. I love it. But at the same time, I can understand um, that this might be a timing thing for some people. It might not be the thing. It might not be their thing. Uh, so I just am curious how you would recommend this series. Um, I, okay, so I'll start so you can finish on, you know, this, the, the big, like the big head stuff. And I'll just start with the, the military <laughs> stuff. So anyone who likes military fantasy, um, anybody who likes reading about, you know, imperialism and military fantasy, what it's, what it's like being in a large army. Jimmy, I think you've talked about, um, on your channel that, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of standing around, hurry up and wait, um, where it's. Uh, oh no, sorry, that was Mike. Mike said that. That's like, <laughs> you know, this, it's the standing around and, and doing nothing, which is largely what, what military action is, is standing around and waiting for something to happen. And Erickson does that brilliantly. Black Company, it, like that's what I'm saying, it reminds me so much of Black Company, which I loved um, back in the day. And I love that. And then watching Siegecraft, uh, Bernard Cornwell, uh, historical fiction writer, is the only person that I know that writes siegecraft uh, comparable to Erickson. Like Erickson, like attack, like attacking cities and what goes into bringing down cities is fascinating to me. I just, you know, again, Roman stuff. Uh, so I love that. And I love the soldier character, the soldier archetype and seeing what goes into a really, really extended campaign because this is something my students don't understand. They think you grab an army, you walk to a city, you punch it in the face, you walk back. No, no. First of all, you don't campaign in the winter. Everything stops for like, you know, five months out of the year and you have to just camp in place. Second, it takes sometimes years to do one thing and you have to have supply lines. And as we see in, you know, the later books, like that becomes a really important thing is bring, you gotta bring crap with you. It's not just a group of soldiers. You got a baggage train a mile long with camp followers and all that stuff really yeah. interests me. So if you are like me and, interest, and that interests you, then absolutely, the series has tons of that in addition to everything else that it offers. Yeah. I have to go right after Alan because as even if you're somebody who can't like those are my least favorite things to read about you still <laughs> might like the series like I hate reading all those and I wish I liked it more like I wish that I did but in saying that like these are still books that I want to reread one day even though as Alan said there's plenty of those scenes and that to read about you can still enjoy the series I think I would recommend it to people that honestly get bored easily reading um, a lot of fantasy books or need like a lot of mental stimulation because you need to be thinking constantly um, and you kind of want that like next chance like to me they sort of feel like a challenge because of it's very time consuming I wouldn't necessarily recommend them to somebody just looking for like something to passively read and not put a lot of time and effort into I think that you won't find payoff because if you're not putting the time in you're going to miss out on too much but I think for maybe readers like myself who want to latch on to characters who enjoy reading about like moral ambiguity in characters who enjoy themes of uh, any kind of relationship, whether it's between brothers, sisters, 
parental, like mother friendship, if you like reading about those types of relationships, you're going to get that in every book um, in like beautiful ways. If you like poetry, if you like like beautiful writing, that's like, I would say like flowery, like metaphorical, like you'll also like these books. Sometimes I read passages to people because I'm annoying like that. And they're like, (laughs) that's in the Malazan series. I'm like, yes, that's in the Malazan. Like, that's why I read these books. Cause I think that like, just the words are pretty. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, you don't have to like military fantasy. Um, and I think that's important to know because I do think that I get asked that a lot. And there's a lot of people who are like me and don't enjoy it, but kind of want to see if maybe they can like the series too. Absolutely. Plus I've had just people tell me that like, The series has literally kept them going day to day in life because they're so attached to these characters that they can't wait to find out what happens next. And I think that's special. That is special. And I loved your video you did on why you should read Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Brittany did a fantastic video on that and talked about a lot of the fan base that have come to her channel who talked about that, how this series has literally saved their lives, has given them purpose and meaning day to day. So that is beautiful. That's amazing. Uh, Jimmy, do you want to follow? Yeah, sure. I, this is probably one of the hardest things uh, coming out of Malaz and not even just understanding the plot, but knowing who to recommend this to. Yeah. I almost never feel comfortable recommending this yeah. <laughs> because I, 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 don't, I don't know. It makes me nervous for some reason. Um, and I love it. I really do. I think that if you were someone, when you run into a roadblock that you get curious less than frustrated or more than frustrated. I think that this is a good series for you because whenever I would be running into roadblocks, I would want to know more. It wasn't one of those things where I just wanted to throw the book out the window. Now I did have days where I didn't feel like engaging with the text as much. Those days I read something else and that's okay. So it's okay to be frustrated at some points, uh, but I do think that you do have to have some sort of drive for curiosity. Mm. And also if you're looking for a challenge, uh, you know, I've read a, most of the larger fantasy series and I don't think anything has ever challenged me quite like this. I will never read anything ever again like this. I think only Erickson could have done this. And I know Esselmont's written books as well, but like for this main 10, I really don't <laughs> like. there's no way anyone else could ever finish this. There's no way. Um, so it's special. And one thing that I think, and we've talked a lot about the thematic uh, purposes or, or value of the series. Let's be honest, this series is pretty damn hype. Like <laughs> the battles and the magic. If, if you want the next level of fantasy, like this is high, 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 high fantasy, which I'm not a fan of. I like low fantasy most of the time. And I just respect the, the, the bravery, I guess, of going with some of these ideas that are so absurd. I mean, Spindle's shirt is made of his dead mother's hair. It's just like yeah. absurd, shit, you know, and some of the things that have happened in the last two books, as far as like war escalating and evolving is unseen. I will never read battles like this ever again without it feeling cheesy. Like there's a Malazan logic that you learn and through the logic that Steve creates in world, it makes sense. It's not just over the top for being over the top. It actually makes sense that these things are happening. So it, it, it's it's weird. It's like we stepping into about, a different reality. It makes Malazan magical sense, right? That's what you yes, said. Yes, Malazan <laughs> logical sense is, is the way Malazan I describe it. Malazan magical sense. Yeah, absolutely. I love what you said, Jimmy. I'm going to um, I'm going to go off some of your points and then I'm going to hand it over to Philip to answer this question too, because I feel the same way. I feel like I have a really hard time recommending this series to somebody because I can't reduce Malazan down to just one thing. It is a military fantasy, but it can't be reduced down to just a military fantasy. It does have its high epic moments as you described, but at the same time, it has those very intimate Uh, character moments that have moved me to tears. Um, It does have powerful battle scenes, but it also has the emotional aftermath of those things. And it does, it does delve into obviously some deep themes about not just escapism that not only appeal to, of course, fantasy lovers, but also it's not necessarily escapist fantasy either. It goes into some deep questions that will make you question things in your own life, in your own society, your own place and role in life. Um, So I think for those deeper questions, if you're somebody who loves that and still loves fantasy and loves all those things, 
And maybe one of those things doesn't quite resonate for you. This could still be for you. So it's really, really hard to, like I said, reduce it down to one thing. But for me, it's it's been powerful on basically every level because like Alan, I love the military aspects. I do. I don't know why. I feel like I should. they're awesome, Joanna. <laughs> And I especially love talking to Alan about the military aspects. I just have so much fun talking to you about those. And then like Brittany, I just love what Brittany shared about the prose. The prose in this series is stunning. The epigraphs are so beautiful. They're, my mother, um, she does not read fantasy. I got her to read Piranesi this last year, but she's not a big fantasy fan. But I've read her a couple of passages from Malazan. And every time I've read her a passage, she has been just blown away. She said, let's write, let's write just for fun. I want to write like that. Like she just hmm. got inspired. She just right away, it took her breath away. Um, so the writing is just so beautiful. The character dynamics are so powerful. And, um, and it just watching Jimmy go on this journey has been wonderful because I've been very much alongside you, Jimmy. And yeah, I just feel like, yeah, I feel like we've, I could just, I just relate so much to everything you've been like experiencing along the way. It's just been awesome. So it's also been just such a bonding experience for me with all four of you and the community at large. It's just been such a special series, um, one that's worthy of discussion and reflection. So that's my very not short answer to the question I gave, but Philip, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, well, I'd like to start by disagreeing with the four of you. I Thank you. Any of you said anything that I would disagree with. I, I think there, that uh, you summed it all up beautifully. I would recommend the Malazan Book of the Fallen to anyone who loves great literature. And that's out. that includes people who don't read fantasy. Now, and I know people who are Malazan fans who don't read other fantasy because it is everything that you said. Uh, it is great literature. I, I make a living teaching uh, literature. Uh, I teach a course called English Classics, you know, um, so there's, you know, Beowulf and Chaucer and Shakespeare and Milton and all these other, you know, great writers. And I love teaching that because the they wrote works that speak to the human experience. They wrote works that deserve to last, deserve to, they, they've lasted because they help us understand who we are and, and where we come from and, and interact with the world around us. And for me, Malazan is that. I believe that this is a series that I hope will be around for a long, long time, that it will be recognized as a, a masterpiece, that uh, people will be in 100 years. I'd love to be around 100 years seeing how people talk about the Malazan Book of the Fallen, because it is that great in my mind. It is great literature, period. Uh, it also happens to be fantasy. Um, but uh, it is just uh, uh, one of the, for me, it is reading it this, this last year and change has been the greatest literary journey of my life. Um, so I absolutely would tell anyone who, who loves great literature, give it a try. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank you to Alan, Library of Alexandria, Brittany from Books with Brittany, Jimmy from the Fantasy Network, and Philip Chase from the channel Philip Chase. Um, all wonderful channels I will link down below, as well as any videos I mentioned um, in this discussion. So thank you all for watching. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.